Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 44. I didn't realize Ezekiel 16 was so long. And we've been talking about Jerusalem as a city. Behold, everyone that uses Proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, Jerusalem, saying, as in the mother, so is the daughter. Now we're talking about a city that brings forth other cities. And in the Bible, you will find mother cities, and you will find sister cities. And what you'll find is, for America, the mother cities would have been Jamestown and Plymouth, Massachusetts. And then other cities branched out from there. Sister cities. You'll get people where they go into one city and they build it up and they'll move out into other cities and towns. Thou art thy mother's daughter that loatheth her husband and her children. Good stand. Thou art the sister of thy sister that loatheth her husbands and her children. Your mother was a Hittite. And your father in Amorite. Again, we read that early in chapter 16. A lot is repeated. Thy elder sister Samaria. Samaria came after. Samaria is the capital of Israel north. Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, but Judah. She and her daughters that dwell at thy left hand. And thy younger sister that dwelleth in thy right hand is Sodom and her daughters. That's interesting. Yet, hast thou not walked after their ways, nor done after their abominations? Syria's already gone, Samaria's already gone into captivity, Israel north. We know Sodom's destroyed. And Gomorrah. But as if that were a little thing, the sins and abominations, thou was corrupted more than they in all thy ways. As I live in oath by the Lord God, saith the Lord God, now you're in trouble because God is saying, all right, I swear by me who lives forever. That'd be like God walking in the courtroom, putting his hand on his Bible, and they say, do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yeah, me. Sodom thy sister has not done she nor her daughters there were five cities with Sodom as thou has done thou and thy daughters you know when we talk about Sodom we talk about you know sodomy and all that that was going on in Jerusalem too there was murdering Idolatry on every street and imagery in, in high places in every street corner in Jerusalem. Jeremiah and Ezekiel tell us. So quite interesting. Behold, now look at verse 49. This was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Are you ready? Sodomy. No. Pride. Proud. And it's an interesting fact in 2021 that the, the, the Sodomites run around with gay pride. Proud to be gay. And God says in the King James 1611 Bible that the, the first sin of Sodom is pride. 
They're proud. Well, what's that song you hear on the red? I'm proud to be American. I love the red, white, and blue. That's a sin. That's the same sin of Sodom. Preachers running around, I'm proud of this, I'm proud of that, I'm proud of that, proud of my children, proud of my church, we're proud of our pastor. Pride is a sin. Jesus says, well done. Never says, I'm proud of you. Fullness of bread, is that not America? We got so much fullness of bread, we can make pumpkin guns. We can waste food. We can fill our dumpsters with, with wasted food. We can put food on a plate that's not meant to be eaten. It's a garnish. We can destroy food because we got too much food. And meanwhile, have homeless people in the streets. An abundance of idleness. That's America, television, entertainment, Mickey Rat Land, Roller Coaster Land. All these places that, that people go and, and snap pictures and, and tourists and all that. Idleness. Then they say they ain't got no time. Friend, the sins of Sodom are the sins of America, and the sins of America are the sins of Sodom. And he goes, God bless America. Was in her and her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. Now that's, as far as America, that's teeter-tottering. Because you know how many homeless, poor, and needy veterans I've met on the street in my ministry? Of a street preacher and street ministries we've had from Connecticut to, to Florida? But I know one thing, if, if you take away the right of American to claim his charity on your income tax, that, that many Americans would give up giving money. They were haughty. That means pride. Proud. And committed abomination before me. God says, therefore, I took them away as I saw good. God said, you know what the best thing I could do as far as the world standard is I can send those angels into Sodom and Gomorrah and destroy it. That's the best thing I could do. But I can call out Lot by the prayers of Abraham. God said what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah was that was good to me. That's interesting. And yet, the sins of Sodom are still rampant today. I ain't talking about just sodomy. For a while there, Russia and America are going in two proud nations. England, the, never, the sun never set upon the English Empire. They can't say that no more. The queen bites half the family to a to a baby ch uh, uh, christening. No, no, we're not going to go. Japan, the the, the you know the, the the mighty emperor of this. No, not anymore. God will break down your pride. Seriously, if you have any pride in your life, you're proud, you're you're haunty or lofty or anything like that, you need to get naked, get in the, get in the room, shut the door, tell no one to come in, and you need to get it right with God. And don't come out of that room till you repent and got it right with God, and there's no more pride. Now, 
Neither has Samaria. <laughs> you, you mean the golden calves? You mean Jezebel? You mean the 450 prophets of Baal? You read the stories of Elijah. That's Samaria. You read you, neither has Samaria committed half of thy sins. But thou hast multiplied thy abominations more than they. You gotta read Jeremiah and Ezekiel. And the sins involved the Christmas tree and, and the Queen of Heaven. And has justified thy sisters in all thy abominations which thou hast done. That's America. It's okay. We'll legalize it. That's not wrong. And we've gotten to a point in America today, in Jerusalem, then it, evil is good and good is evil. And God calls it an abomination, and your Baptists call it, hey, shut him off, turn him off, I don't want to hear him. Thou also, which has judged thy sisters, neighboring cities. So Jerusalem's looking at your sister, <laughs> look what you're doing. God's like, uh... What, the, what about the log, the, the, the tree that's in your eyes? You know, when Jesus came, Judah had a great prejudice against the Sumerians. See verse 51? Sumerians were the people of Samaria. But how many Samaritans put Jesus to trial before the Roman government? Oh, look at he's, he, he's with the Samaritans. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Bear thy own shame for thy sins that thou hast committed more abominable than they. You know what people do? Well, look at what they're doing. God says, look at what you're doing. Judge yourself. You know, Christians are to judge themselves. And the sins that they sin against God to get right. Rather than passing the buck on what they do, what he does, and what she does. They are more righteous than thou. <laughs> Sodom was in that list. And I believe God said something to Abraham. The, 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 the sins that reached to the fullest of Sodom. Now I'm going to come down and make sure before I judge that sin, I want to make sure what I've heard is right. <laughs> When has or uh, when or when will God come to America with his hands? All right, just check it out before I judge it. Germany had great pride and persecuted the Jews. Where are they today? Yet. Yeah. Be thou confronted also, and bear thy shame, in that thou hast justified thy sisters. Why? Because you're doing the same thing, and you're doing more. That'd be like, you're in a classroom, okay? <clears throat> and the teacher has... Marked all the children's papers with a red X wrong. No, I mean, no, I mean all the students have gotten the answers wrong, and she marks it all correct. That, that's I said it wrong. 
One plus one is eight is the answer in all the papers, and she marks the papers correct while she puts up on the board one plus one is eight. It's wrong. But, you know, I if I tell them they're wrong, then I'm wrong, and I can't tell them I'm wrong, so I'm going to mark it right. You know? Evil is good, and good is evil. When I shall bring again their captivity, the captivity of Solomon and her daughters, and the captivity of Samaria and her daughters, then will I bring again the captivity of thy captives in the midst of them. That thou mayest bear their, thy own shame, and that shame is going to be living in Babylon. Where King Nebuchadnezzar tries to get them to eat the Babylonian meals with Babylonian names and Babylonian gods and Babylonian ways and Babylonian technology and Babylonian that's in the churches today. And the churches have no shame. Matter of fact, the churches promote rather than have shame of the bit Babylon, mystery Babylon that's in their churches in 2021. There is no shame. I mean, they talk about, oh, you know, the Thanksgiving and the pilgrims and all that. You know, the pilgrims would never have ever had allowed Christmas to be celebrated. It was forbidden. Not today. There's no shame in sin today. And there's great pride in the churches. Jeremiah and Ezekiel are great two studies for present day church. Never mind the, the Gentiles in the world. When thy sister Sodom and her daughters shall return to her former state, and Samaria and her daughters shall return to their former state. Then thou art thy daughter shall return to the, your former state. Sin. For thy sister Sodom was not mentioned by mouth in the day of thy pride. Before thy wickedness was discovered. As at the time of thy reproach of the daughters of Syria. And all they around about her, the daughters of the Philistines, which despise thee round about. <laughs> you have become so grotesque. <laughs> the Gentiles are displeased with thee. And there's nothing sicker to realize a Christian. And he goes to work and he, you know, I'm a Christian. I go to the Baptist church and all that. And they look at your life like, really? You're a Christian and you do that? You ain't fooling them. Or you're not really a Christian. You're just a, you're just a person in disguise. I believe when the rapture happens, many people professing Christians are going to be left behind and have to give an account. Imagine if, if, if the rapture happened on a church day and you hear that trump and, and the ruckus and your pastor standing before the church, he's going to have to get explain himself. How come you didn't go? Well, how come you didn't go? And the world will look at, yeah, I knew you weren't a Christian. 
That's what that's what it's about. And for the true thing of the world, they may not like Christians, they may not like the Bible, they may not love Jesus, but they will look to some side. A Christian is supposed to pray for me. And a lot, of, a lot of people at work and a lot of your friends, and when they got trying needs and problems like that, they will go to a Christian and say, hey, you know, I got this. Can you pray for my son? Can you pray? People across the street will walk across the street. Yeah, hey, listen, I know you're a Christian. I know you go to church. And we got this. Will you pray? But when you're a pretender, you're a spiritual pretend, pretender, the world looks at you, you're a hypocrite. No hope in you. Thou hast borne thy lewdness and thy abominations, saith the Lord. That's God's people living in sin. That's the Christian living in sin. For thus saith the Lord God. I will deal with the oh you get the, I will deal with thee. Can you get that expression? I want to deal with you. I mean that's the expression that, that when your when your father comes home, who he, he gonna deal with you? And you go upstairs in your bed. Oh, please, don't bring that home. Please don't bring that home. Oh no. I will deal with thee as thou hast done. You're going to get your just desserts. Which has despised the oath and breaking the covenant between God and them. Yeah, we'll keep the law. We'll do everything you tell us to do, God. Then you break it. I'll tell you one of the things, and I don't see many churches do it, but uh, they have baby dedications. And then the parents later on let those babies grow up and do whatever they want to do. You made an oath before the pastor and before the church of the people that, that you belong to. You're a member. I'm going to raise, my, try to raise my child to the best of my ability. And then you file. And then at the judgment seat of Christ, why did I get wood, hay, and stubble? Because you got what you deserved. You know, I'm from Connecticut. And I'm going to enjoy the great smell that I can't smell here in Florida. You say, what's that? At the judgment seat of Christ, the great smell of evergreen trees being burned called Christmas trees. When God takes all your Christmas trees and lays them on the fire and they burn. And you won't find gold and silver because it's artificial gold and artificial silver. It just melt. Jeremiah chapter 10. You know how, how you know well Jeremiah chapter 10 is? I've seen churches jump over that church, that, that chapter. I think, you know, oh, you know that, that doesn't mean a Christmas tree. Huh? Why do you go to the defense of your gods? I don't know how many Christians come up to me. I, I don't know you from Tom, Dick, and Harry. And they, well, you know, we, we have a Christmas tree. I ain't going to take a bazooka out. Just don't read my Facebook posts. You'll be safe. You know, once you see them. Nevertheless, I will remember thy covenant with thee the days of thy youth. Exodus and Deuteronomy and Joshua. And will establish unto thee an everlasting covenant. That's the covenant in the millennium. That's the covenant where I will wash away all your sins. I will put a new spirit in you and give you a clean heart. And they'll never break that one. Then thou shalt remember thy ways, the millennium, and be ashamed of their sins. Christians are going to be ashamed of their sins after they walk away from the judgment seat of Christ and you can't do nothing about it.
And I wonder if God will have a moment where you can just go kick your pastor in the pants for not teaching you right. If even he's in heaven. <gasps> Whoa! That burned. Yeah. Not everybody's going to heaven, my friend. That burned. And thou shalt receive thy, thy sh and when thou shalt receive thy sister, thy elder and thy younger, I will give them unto thee for daughters, but not by thy covenant. The Gentiles will not get the everlasting covenant that Israel gets. But there'll be Gentiles in the millennium. There'll be Gentiles in the eternal life and Christians. I, as a Christian, is not going to get anything of the Jewish covenant right there. And I'm a brother or I'm a brother to Jews that will be in the millennium and will be in the everlasting life because I have received Christ. Christ was Jewish, making me family with the Jews that are right with God. But I will never, ever be able to, the replacement theology, that the promises of the Jews now come to the, that's yeah, it, a, it's a lie. And I will establish my covenant with thee, the Jews, and then again, number 19, thou shalt know that I am the Lord. That thou shalt know I am the Lord is when Jesus Christ is seated King of King and Lord of Lords of the Jewish nation on David's throne. When the Jews get the new heart, get their sins cleansed, and they are made right. Not all Jews are going to experience that. That thou mayest remember. How often does the Bible tell us to remember and be confounded? And never open thy mouth any more because of thy shame. When I pacify toward thee for all that thou hast done, Save the Lord God. So Israel in the millennium is going to remember all their sins. And it's going to bring shame. And I believe in my heart that, that there will be Christians who get cities. And you're going to have pastors and Christians under the rulership of those Christians because the pastor in those churches is involved in sin and that man preaches against the sin and you told him to shut up and God says, hey, that man was 100% correct and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give him five cities and you're going to be under him. And when you're under the cities of those that preach, you're not going to have Christmas and Easter under our cities. You're not going to have your gala of fun and, and antics of sin under those that get the reign of cities. You're going to get what's right. Oh, how... Humble it will be to break your pride with that man you hated in church because he preached right. And I wish you shut up. I got to sit under him in the millennium. And he's got crowns and I don't. Because I wanted to have this pleasure of sin for a season. Hi, Moses. I'll leave it right there. 